Hey guys, it's just me and Tonto sitting here in front of my seed starting station. Um, well, it's more of a seed collection station. Um, it's actually currently a huge mess. And so that is what today's video is going to be about. We are going to process and organize my flower seeds. Only flower seeds today. We'll tackle the vegetable stuff another day. Um, so I have a helper, my grandma, who's here visiting and staying with us from Kentucky and she will be part of this video today. So I hope you will join me. Are you all right? <laughs> Are we supposed to talk yet? <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back. So this is kind of part two. You met my mammal in the last video when uh, we talked about garden superstitions. And I'm gonna, link oh, that, <laughs> I'm gonna link that video below. Um, so if you wanna go check that out, you can. If not, we're gonna get started with today's video. Um, it's gonna be where I reveal my flower seed collection to my grandma oh, Lord, and she's going to help me organize them because over the last year or so they've gotten really out of control and they're not organized at all and I'm going to see if you can help me organize them by category like the name of the flower. You got Christmas tree in your hair. Really? And then um, and then we're going to work on some cards um, that I hope you will help me fill out. So there's a few important things for me that I like to know about a flower. Um, I think it's rosemary, actually. My rosemary is still hanging on the chandelier up here. So oh, okay. Well, I think when I, that's when you <laughs> leaned over there. Yeah, when I turned on the camera, I got rosemary in my hair. <laughs> it smells good. Um, anyways, so for me, I like to know, um, does it need light to germinate? Does it need cold stratification of uh, germination? And then... Is it a perennial? Is it an annual? So there's all these questions that we'll get to eventually, but first we're just going to focus on putting the same flower seeds in the same category, the family, the same family. Like all my daisy seeds go in the daisies and snapdragons, snapdragons. Okay. So you ready to see what you're going to be working on? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to use this whole table. I've cleared off this big dining oh table. Oh Lord. We're going to spread out as far as we need to. So here we go. Now jump it. There you go. So Are you going to dump it? I will, but I just wanted you to get oh it over my there. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> First. Well, maybe we should just oh okay. God. take so, one of them out and work on it at a time. Well, we can just dump. Oh, gosh. We can just dump. That says daisy. I was going to say sunflower. And I saw a daisy there somewhere. Nope. So this is how I organize oh my, my flower Lord. seeds. I have a basket that goes in this shelving unit I have in the dining room. And then I use these translucent bins to organize. Um, what I'm hoping to do is let's do, um, maybe we'll do cold stratification on one side and non on the other. I used to do warm weather flower seeds versus cool weather flower seeds, but I really don't have that many cool weather. Well, I think you got us a head start. These are all zenas. Yes, some of these are nicely still kind of organized, but then I have this big stash behind me of stuff oh, that, dear Lord. That, <laughs> that needs to get processed. So, um, yeah, we got <laughs> we got a ways to go. So for you guys, you don't have to watch everything. I'll just kind of spot check and jump in with the camera every now and then as Mama is organizing. Oh and then when Lord. we get to the point where we're actually trying to make a more concrete plan as to how we want to organize our flower seeds, I'll pop back in with that. Um, this is, I'm anticipating this is a video that takes Crazy a days. Crazy Daisy. At least two or three days. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, my word. You mean we're going to do this for two or three days? Well, we're going to take a break. So her show, her story comes on in about 15 minutes. Days. So we'll be taking a break. But I just want to say thanks for being here with us. And Mamma wanted to go home a couple weeks ago, but the weather didn't cooperate. <laughs> and then this weekend they were going to travel back, and then the weather didn't cooperate. It's not so much the weather here. So they're here. just putting me up for keep. <laughs> yeah, we've had her a couple months now. Um it's not so much the weather here in Virginia it, or the weather in Kentucky where she's from. It's that there's that middle state of West Virginia. And yeah, that was where we had to. December, January, February, it's going to be tricky to travel through. Even March, when you came through that time, it was March and y'all had it? snow and ice. So uh, who knows how long they will be here. Maybe when it's time to plant the sunflowers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so stay with us. This is going to be a continuous video over the next couple days. Probably um, for the next couple months. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm the list of all this. We'll stop there for now, Mamaw. All right, so I just got back from running errands, and it looks like Mamaw has been very busy, right? Yes, Mamaw has been very busy. Okay, so a good start. 
Now um, we got half a table done. Just got a few piles over here. And then we will be on our way to organizing even uh, further. So I think it's time for Mamaw to take a break, though. We're going to cook some dinner. All right, Mamaw, say goodbye for today. Bye. So I snuck in here and uh, I put a few away to help Mamaw out. And uh, I think we're making really good progress. And uh, I think she'll be surprised when she comes in here and sees all the different varieties. So I left her a little pile here and I think uh, she'll hopefully enjoy going through here today. We shall see. All right, we're back, Mamma. Yep, that's in our seed. <laughs> we have made a lot of progress, right? Yeah. And I think we're ready to tackle the second part of this, which is going to be organizing these seats. So you haven't seen what I come up with yet. I'm going to put it in front of you. I'm thinking this is how we're going to organize. So one side, we're going to put the natives, the frost tolerant seeds and things that need code stratification. Okay. And then on the other side, we're going to put warm weather annuals, anything that'll die in the cold, like, you know, um, those coxcomb, they die when it gets cold. Oh, really? And then um, I think I'll also put the things that have a potential to self-seed, but there's no guarantee. Like my um, coleus, sometimes that will come back, sometimes it won't. Let's try don't, and... don't the coxcombs come back to you? Yes. Coffee's dead. It does. Mm. But it's not a guarantee. But the plant, the mother plant dies. Okay. So for organization purposes, we're going to focus on this. What I've got there. Hopefully it'll be nice and balanced. We'll have equal amount on both sides, but who knows. Um, so that's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to grab these rubber bands. We did find a lot of vegetable seeds mixed in with a bunch of stuff I needed to go Thanks through. Rubber bands. Yeah, so we're just going to start bunching. Some are already mostly kind of bunched. Um, we're going to bunch everything that is more than... Uh, one packet, so two or more, bunch with rubber bands, and then we're going to put into this side. And we'll come back in a few, probably like 30, 40 minutes, and show you what that looks like. Okay, so we're making some progress, but Mamma had a good question, which is... How do you know which goes in the warm and which goes in the cold? Okay, so if you've grown it before, uh, like I've grown these before, I know the parent plant dies. But this of all some heavily self seeds, but it's still gonna go in the warm weather because the actual plant that I'm growing will die. So there are things I don't know about because I've never grown it, like the Dara. So what I would do is I would look at the seed packet first. It says it's an annual. It says that it'll bloom until frost. So that's a clue that it's warm weather. Um, let's see when it says to sow it. So recommended one to two weeks before your average last frost date. Okay. Or you can start it inside before. So those are both kind of clues that it's a warm weather type thing. Um, I'm trying to look. And sometimes some seed packs will put the temperature uh, range when it will germinate. So just going off of the seed packet, I've not done any research on this. I would probably put this into the warm weather without knowing any other information. Now, of course, you've got Google. So you can um, do that if you need to. And then there's some tricky things, too. Um, so snapdragons, depending on where you live, they could be an annual. But for me, um, in zone 7 to 8, they are perennial. So I know they're frost um, tolerant. They're almost like a perennial here. And they're kind of hard to kill. So we're going to put those in the cold weather with a rubber band. Let's see. Let's see. So Mamaw had talked about the coxcomb because that comes back on its own. But the, the plant that grows in your summer season, it, it's going to die. So we're going to put this in warm weather, even though it does self-seed very, very readily. Um, this would go into warm weather. So I'm going to leave that there for you, Mamaw. I already forgot. Was this warm or cold? Um, the snapdragons are cold. That will be cold. And then the coxcomb can be in the warm now these sweet peas, this is kind of tricky because it does say it's an annual, but I know from growing peas that they like the cool weather 
and it tells me right here when to plant January through April so I could go plant these right now mm -hmm. I might do that so this is going to go into the cool weather and that's that's how you do it um, you don't have to know everything you just have to know how to look for the clues um, on the seed packet and or do your own research um, there's other seeds that are biannual and that means mammal that if I planted this in this spring it's not going to flower this year it's going to flower next year mm -hmm. so it's really a long game for some of these flowers but i love sweet william i think it's gorgeous i think my mom liked it too. yes this is an old timey kind of a cottage garden flower absolutely love those um but there was one i wanted to show you guys this is a tricky one this is a five spot flower it is an annual and it likes full sun but it doesn't like high heat. Like in the high summer heat, we can't grow this. But it's still an annual, but it likes cool weather. So <laughs> I'm trying to think of, I'm, I'm even stumped on this one where I should put it. Uh, this is actually a tricky one. So we'll leave that off to the side. But that's our process right now. So we'll come back in just a few minutes, ma'am, all right, and yep. finish up. Okay. Our indoor seeds can be started indoors about three weeks before last expected frost. But since four o'clock grows so quickly, we advise sowing directly into the garden in all but very short summer areas. It's pretty. So what, to where, start outdoors. Where would you put that? Where you sit in your uh, butterfly thing. I mean, which category? Would you put that in the warm weather items, like annuals, or would you put that in the cold perennial type items? Well, it says full sun in ordinary gardens when spring weather is warm. So I'd probably put that in the warm too. In yeah, so we're making a lot of progress, as you guys can that see. Sounds pretty. Yes, it does. Um, so I was kind of grouping these mallows. These are all in the mallow family. I don't know what a mallow is. Well, hollyhocks are in the mallow family, really and we we just went through the hollyhocks. Hollyhocks. Um, well, actually, no, we put those over in the tricky category, didn't we? Right here, yeah. Uh, because sometimes they can be perennial, sometimes they can be biennial, and sometimes. They could die and just drop their seeds and self-seed. So it's kind of like a mixed bag with those. So we kind of have those over in our tricky pile to work on later. And then this group of mallows is kind of the same because I know from growing silver cup, that's an annual. The cranberry hibiscus, which is gorgeous, ma'am. I'll have to show you some pictures of that. I love hibiscus. That is an annual. But this one is more, this acts more like a biannual. And then I've got this perennial um, poppy mallow. And then the marshmallow is in the mallow family, but that's actually a perennial. So I'm going to actually break these up. I used to keep them together, but now we're going to break them up by annual and uh, perennial. And then um, I believe the Swamp Rose Mallow. I believe that's perennial, but actually I'm going to look that up to make sure. Yep, so there's a lot of tricky ones. We're getting down to the tricky pile. And then also we kind of got stumped with the fox glove. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know foxes wore gloves. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is gorgeous. This is the giant variety. I bought the seeds probably two or three years ago, but I cannot bring myself to plant it because it is. It has a. It's very toxic, and I have oh, a cat. Is that the one you told me about? Yeah, oh. I have a cat and a dog and deer that come eat and rabbits and all other kind of animals. I just. Uh, I'm just going to just put this off to the side and probably never, ever plant it. But um, that's just me. We could just put, put it in a picture frame. You could look at it. Maybe. <laughs> Couldn't yeah. smell it like that. Yeah. Well, we don't want to get that close, probably. This up, and this is actually a perennial, but it's not going to flower the first year. It's going to flower after the second uh, year of growth. And Mamaw just made a really good point that, you know, we do wish to move. And if we did, I wouldn't even get to see this if I move this year. Or so. So um, we may not grow this this year, but it is so pretty. We just looked at a picture of the plant online, and it was gorgeous. Um, so this is going to go into the perennial with the other mallows, and uh, we'll just keep working our way through this. And for the zebrina, I have grown this a couple years uh, before. I don't currently have any because it died off. So I'm thinking... This is a maybe what they call like a tender perennial in that it will be perennial for one to three years and then kind of putter out and die. Um, but it was gorgeous. This is a very gorgeous plant. It does say it's a self-seeding hardy annual. So I think we're going to put this with the other mallows in the cold um, frost in the tolerant. Yes, with those other guys with that rubber band. The ones we just, yeah, the ones we just put in there. But then I know from growing these two that they are definitely annual mallows and 
They are very breast tender. So these can go by themselves. We are done. Mama helped me a lot today. And you can see we have two different containers. And surprisingly, it's pretty equal. Um, we did kind of go by what I set up in the beginning, although there are a few seeds, like for instance, uh, the Bells of Ireland, that is actually an annual, but it needs cold stratification. It does better with that. There's a couple other in here like that as well. So towards the end with all of those ones that um, we were just not sure about, I had to just start making some hard choices. Um, so even like calendulas, um, that's almost like a year round thing for me. You know, sometimes I have some flowering in December and January. So I just kind of really tried to stick to what I had up here as best I could. And I think later we'll do a little bit more fine tuning and um, especially as I start doing the milk jugs. So when I start the milk jugs here, like now or soon, we're gonna start with the left side. We're gonna start with like natives, perennials, and things that need code stratification. Um, so we're gonna start with those. And then as the months progress into like March, uh, we will do the warm weather annuals. Um, and I just asked my mom like, do you want a milk jug to take home <laughs> of plants? And uh, we're not sure how my husband will feel about that in the car. <laughs> Although he has transported, transported uh, tomato plants and so forth before. So we'll see, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe it's an option. And then um, I don't know if we're gonna make a separate video, but I found a bunch of seeds I've been missing. Well, actually I was missing that casserole dish. I couldn't find that at Christmas. <laughs> And um, we may <laughs> we may process some seeds. We may not. We may make a video about it. We may not. But I do think if we start the milk jugs, my mamaw is still here. Maybe she'd like to join me for that and make a video. Mamma, is there anything you want to say to any of the... I just read all the comments from our first video together. Uh, the one where we talked about the garden superstitions. And I'll link that in the description box. Uh, so I just read her all those comments, and I think she really enjoyed uh, hearing those. And yeah, I think everybody that's read it and commented, and I want to tell my sisters I love them and miss them. And my wheels, Meals on Wheels, <laughs> I miss that too, because they came to see me every other week. <laughs> So I guess I send my love, and that's it. Yeah, and, and Mills on Wheels is um, a code name for some family members that are really dear and sweethearts and help Mamaw out. Yeah, yeah they are sweet. All right, Mamaw, well, it's really late, so I think we're going to finish up because our eyes are really tired after reading all <laughs> these <laughs> small little seed packets. And I did want to share about the, um, I forgot to show you all, the like craft paper type tape. You can get these pretty cheap. Um, we had so many little seeds that we found on the table. and uh, But you can reseal your packages, and this will come on and off many times. So we may work on that too as we're doing the milk jugs, and maybe when we do a little bit more fine-tuning of organizing the seeds. So thanks, guys, for joining us today for organizing the seeds and walking through this couple days of just really doing something I've been putting off for a long time. So thank you, Mamaw. Thank you for helping me. All yeah, right, guys. To. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, Mamaw. Bye. 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 <laughs> Have a good day.